What's up guys, it's your boy back at it with another video and today we're going to be talking about my review of WWE Extreme Rules from Sunday. I know it's pretty late because like thir or, uh, Thursday, so uh, it's a lot later than it should be, but this is kind of the time I usually do it, only because it gives me a couple days to do the other stuff and yeah, all that, but I do have a... I did watch the show. Um, before I get into it, I do I do want to say though, I know a lot of people like to do the whole thing where they're like, oh, you know, when AEW starts doing the weekly television, we're well, I'm switching to them. I just want to say, guys, you don't need to choose a company, right? So. When competition starts happening, that's going to create better wrestling. That's going to create better for both companies. Why not just enjoy wrestling all around? I know I say this a lot, but it's true. Just enjoy the different companies in their wrestling. Quit worrying about who you're going to be on, what side you're going to be on. If you're a wrestling fan, you should just enjoy it all. I, that's that's all I gotta say. I'm gonna I'm not just gonna watch AEW or I'm not just gonna watch WWE. I'm gonna watch both of them. I mean, I'm gonna enjoy what they're putting in front of me. That's just what it is. Anyway, I'm gonna get into this WWE Extreme Rules. My review, my thoughts on the matches and everything. I will say I did not watch the pre-show, but I will, you know. Say who won those matches. If you haven't heard, I mean, you probably heard because it's been about like four days or whatever. So you probably had enough time to figure that one out. But if you haven't, right here, your boy got that for you. Anyway, in the pre-show, Intercontinental Championship match, Shinsuke Nakamura defeated Finn Balor and won the Intercontinental Championship I did not watch this because it was on the pre-show and I missed it. I was actually making a video at that time. Um, honestly, I heard it was a banger and I freaking believe it because of how good Finn Balor is, how good Shinsuke is. <laughs> to me, it was kind of the battle of a battle of who's been off TV the longest. Honestly, <laughs> not to be rude or anything, but they're never on TV, dude. Like WWE's just been screwing around with them, I guess. But uh, yeah. Um, so I can't really say too much about that match. Like I said, I had I didn't really see it. So I heard it was really good though, and I fully believe that cruiserweight championship match. Uh, Drew, La Drew Gulag defeated Tony Nese. Uh, kind of expected since he just won the belt. Kind of expected. I did want Tony Nese to win it back. I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm not the biggest Drew Gulag fan. I'm not like a huge Drew Gulag fan. But I do. I, I used to not even really like Tony Nese. But like I got used to him when he started like teaming up with Buddy Murphy and stuff. Because Buddy Murphy's lit, and then it kind of got me to like Tony Nese a little bit better. Uh, so, I kind of wanted Tony Nese to win, but it is what it is. I'm sure it was a pretty good match. Like I said, it's on the pre-show, so I didn't watch it. Uh, Cruiserweights, man, they're always having banger matches, dude. No matter who it is. Like, I may not like Drew Gulag too much, but I know the man puts in the work. So, that, yeah, I can't go against him like that. I'm sure it was so damn good of a match, to be honest. If you watched it and you know how good these pre-show matches are, let me know what you think of them down in the comments below because I like every time you see the Cruiserweights wrestle, dude, they put on a damn clinic. So that's, that's just what it is. Anyways, let's get to the stuff that I did see. No holds barred tag team match. The Undertaker and Roman Reigns versus Drew Gul or Drew Gulak, Drew McIntyre and Shane McMahon. I'm gonna be honest, since I haven't been really watching TV or the weekly shows, I really don't know how. Like I know how it happened, but I don't know how. Like why Drew McIntyre is kind of like Shane McMahon's henchman or whatever. I don't understand it. However. 
The match was pretty dope. In my opinion, I know there's people that can say, oh, well, Undertaker's too old. Uh, he, he botches. Look, dude, Undertaker's still my favorite wrestler of all time. That's just what it is. And I thought the match was pretty dope. It's actually one of his better matches in the last couple of years. Like, the, the match was a damn banger to me. And I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I like the Roman Reigns and Undertaker tag team. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Like, I think it's dope, honestly. I don't know why they... I kind of like... Uh, shout out to Macho T, man. He came up with, like, the big dogs of destruction. I like that better than the graveyard dogs, to be honest. But, you know, you do you, you do what you got to do. Um, but the match was so damn good, dude. Undertaker ended up winning the match, I think. Didn't he? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he tombstone Shane, right? I do know that, like, Elias interfered and hit, like, Undertaker or something in the back with a chair. That was pretty crazy. Uh, dude, the spot where, like, Drew McIntyre was behind Undertaker while Undertaker was taunting and then Roman came out, came out of nowhere and saved Undertaker from behind. Dude. That was so lit. I like that spot. It was like so out of nowhere, dude. Mind me a little bit of Randy Orton one time. No, nah, but that match was dope. Anyways, let's move on to the Raw Tag Team Championship match. By the way, guys, I'm trying to, I'm just going to go through it quickly. I know y'all probably don't like sitting here for two hours while I ramble on about each match. So I'm just kind of skimming through a little bit. Uh,. So now we got the Raw Tag Team Championship match. Revival versus the Usos. Again, man, two teams that put in damn work. The Usos are probably my favorite tag team in the world right now, to be honest. Yeah, I know people are going to be like, dude, what are you talking about, bro? The Young Bucks, dude, the Young Bucks. Nah, dude. To me, I'm, I'm a Usos fan, dude. Always have been, always will. The Usos are that team, man. They are just that team. I love the Usos. But uh, they did take the L, though, against the Revival. The Revival, like I said, man, they put on a damn clean. The Revival's a great team, too. They were great in NXT. They haven't been treated too good on the main roster, but maybe it's a good start now that Paul Heyman's the one running them. So it's going to be pretty cool. Uh the match was really good. I remember the end was a shatter machine, and I love their finisher. The shatter machine's lit. And it came out of, it kind of came out of nowhere, too, to be honest. Like, one of them ducked the Usos, like, clothesline or something. And then the other one ducked it, I think. And then he went to swing back, and they just put him right in the shatter machine. That was fire, bro. Telling you. Um. Actually, somewhere on the top of the tag teams, who do y'all think is the best tag team in the world? You know, I know there's probably going to be people saying the Young Bucks, maybe even Lucha Bros. Dude, I, I just want to hear what y'all think because there is so many damn good tag teams out there. I, I, I would love to hear what y'all think about that. Uh, so let's get on to the next one. Oh, yeah. Aleister Black defeated Cesaro. That match was dope. And I mean, that was probably one of my favorite matches on the card because, look, dude, if you know me, I love Aleister Black, man. Aleister Black is so damn good to me. Like, just how calm he is in the ring and, like, how freaking. He just is very dangerous in the ring. Like, he sc screws someone up, bro. But, like, he's calm, though, when he's doing it. Like, I just love that about him. And and Cesaro trying to do the singles career again. You know, he's getting back into it. Cesaro's really good, too. Um, I, It was a banger match. Out of, dude, again, out of nowhere, Alistair just was hitting that combo. And then, bop! Black Mass, it's over. And you know what I heard? I think uh, Alistair Black's, they're making Alistair Black's move kind of like a one-hit 
thing. So every time he hits it one time, he wins, which is really cool. I think that's good. It's kind of like a Randy Orton thing. Whenever Randy Orton hits RKO, it's over. Like, I love that because it gives the finisher more, like, more, like, greatness. Like, if you... See, some, a lot of finishers, like, you know, the F5 gets pick, kicked out of, like, six times by Roman Reigns. You know what I mean? The spear gets kicked out. Everybody get, Everybody's finisher just doesn't have the credibility anymore. And then when you got, like, Randy Orton's finisher, and then, like, now the Black Mass is starting to get credibility to the point where, so whenever he hits it once, it's over. So just imagine once they build the credibility up, right, against the right person like a while from now, way up the road, when he's in like a title shot or something, or if he has a title and someone's trying to beat him, he hits the black mass and then they kick out and everybody's like, what? Just everybody's just going to drop, dude. Like, holy shit. This happened. So I, I honestly... It's just going to be great. But uh, back to that. The match was so freaking awesome, dude. Um, I, I love it. Anyways, uh, let's get on to the next one. Because I could literally keep going on forever with that. Uh, SmackDown Women's Championship. Handicap match. Bailey defeated Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. I'm going to be straight up and honest. Alexa Bliss wasn't in the ring too much. So... It didn't hurt her too bad, right? <laughs> but it didn't, it, I don't know. It just was weird that Bailey was able to beat two people clean. And I, I get it that she's a face right now and she's being the person. But I really thought that like Sasha would show up to help her to even the odds or like, or Nikki Cross would turn on Alexa, or Alexa would turn on her, or something was going to happen, because I felt like the handicap was, like, too much. But then again, like I said, Alexa didn't get too much, like, ring time. Uh, Nikki Cross took much, most of the damage. I guess they they kind of made her look really bad in that match, to be honest. So that kind of sucks. I don't know why they did it. They should have they should have made the match a lot better to to be in my opinion, the match was okay. It wasn't like really good. I feel like they kind of made Alexa and Nikki look bad, but it is what it is. Let's move on to the next one. The last man standing match between Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley. Look, dude, that could not have gone any better because like the only thing I would change is how they kept fighting in the stairs all the time. I I don't like that because in the stairs you can't really do much since there's fans all around. They punch once and they walk up and then they punch again and walk back down. It's it's something I don't really like. But uh I do the finish of the match when when Braun power slammed them Power slam Bobby through that like I don't even know what it was to be honest, and he went down with him, and dude, we th you know everybody's thinking, oh crap, they're both gonna get counted out, and then Braun just bust through the damn wall, dude, and won the match. Like I was completely going insane for that. I marked the hell out for that, dude. That had me going crazy. That ending was so perfect. Like, now all they got to do is keep Braun on that momentum. They got to keep him going right now. They need to do what they didn't do a, a couple years ago. They need to f finally get him in the title picture and get him with this momentum he's on now. Because that was perfect, in my opinion. So, that, that's all I'm saying. That match was so great. If you didn't watch that one, you missed a damn hell of a last minute any match. I'm just saying. Anyways, let's get on to the next one, baby. All right, SmackDown Tag Team Championship Triple Threat Match. The New Day ver or versus Dan Bryan and Rowan versus Heavy Machinery. 
uh, New Day won, which I thought was pretty dope because now all New Day have titles, and that's really cool. And that was actually my second option because I remember when I made the predictions video, I was like, either Rowan and Daniel are going to win or New Day I have all three titles. And one of them came true. The only reason I thought Rowan and Daniel would win was because of the Daniel trying to get the tag team revolution going where he could elevate the tag team uh spot of the show and make them main event wrestlemania which i think is cool and i think is possible it would be so dope to see tag teams main event wrestlemania i think it's very cool and we'll hope to see it in the future um but daniel went crazy after he lost that match man after the show, he went crazy. If you didn't see that promo, you might want to go to WWE. I think it's on their YouTube. I know it's on their Twitter. Um, you have to watch that because the, his promo afterwards, he goes nuts. And I think it's kind of cool because, like, I don't know. They had to give some sort of something after they lost because if they could, if they just lost and left it like that, that would be right because of how they built them up to me. Uh, so New Day winning, though, was pretty dope. Because now they got all three titles, and I, I really wanted that to happen just because I felt like Xavier and Big E were kind of getting left out, to be honest. At least that's how I felt because Kofi had the title. He was starting to leave them behind and just going out and doing his own thing by himself, and it was kind of... Like, sad for the New Day. You know, they weren't all together anymore, really, all the time. But now all three of them got titles. So, you know, it's fine in the world again. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah. I really liked Extreme Rules. I thought it was really cool. Anyways, let's get to the next match. Oh, by the way, before I get to the next match, that triple threat match, and I know I've been saying this for almost every match, but it's true. That was a damn banger. Okay, I honestly did not expect Daniel Bryan to take the pin. If I'm being totally honest, I did not expect Daniel Bryan to take the pin. That, that was very shocking to me. Like, they had Daniel Bryan being the guy that built up the, the tag team division just for him to take the pin. That was surprising to me, but I thought it was really good because that led to his promo. So I thought that was really cool. Anyways, let's move on. Uh, so the United States Championship match, again, so freaking good. Just like I predicted, the club helps AJ Styles win the title. Now a three-time United States Champion. And uh, perfect match. Just perfect match. Perfect way to make Ricochet lose the title. I, I kind of... I love Ricochet, dude. He's one of my favorites. Like... He is so damn good in the ring. He's good on the mic. Like, he has so much potential. I I think he could have held on to it longer, but I felt like it was the right thing to give AJ the title right then just because he has the club with him now. They are going to be pushed to the sky, you know what I mean? So, like, you got to start somewhere. I hope that they don't break up the club again. Like, I know they've been doing this for the last couple of years where they just get the club together for, like, a couple matches or something, and then, boom, it's over. They can't do this to us again, damn it. I want them to be together for a while. But uh, the match was so freaking great. The phenomenal form, dude. Wow. Just everything. Just everything. The match is just complete awesome. I honestly just I don't I don't even know I don't even have words. I don't even have words. I don't even got no words. I don't even got no damn words for it. I can't wait to see where the club goes in this whole thing. Because it's 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 gonna be great, honestly. I, that's what I feel like. It's gonna be a real great thing to see. The club I hope that, like, Gallows and Anderson get, like, tag titles, too, and, like, because I know they were gonna leave WWE or whatever, 
because uh, they weren't really getting anything. They weren't able to wrestle. They weren't on TV. They weren't really getting none. So I wouldn't blame them if they left. Now they're on TV and stuff, and now they're back in the club. And I've heard, or there's rumors at least, or reports showing that they are interested in maybe get re-signing with WWE now. So, like, they really like being back in this spot, and I think it's pretty cool. Just hopefully WWE don't screw up and break them up, because that would just be terrible. Um, all right, let's see. What's next here? We got the WWE Championship match. Can I just say... That I am so not damn used to one Trouble in Paradise putting somebody away. Like, I was talking about it in that match. I was like, dude, tr Kofi never puts someone away with one Trouble in Paradise, ever. It's oh, They always kick out. And then that one, the, as soon as I'm saying that, he hits it, and then boom, he doesn't kick out. Dude, I was, I was in shock. I marked out for that. I was like, oh my god, dude. Like, the match was dope. Samoa Joe put in the work, dude. Honestly, I I thought about it and I was like, well, if Samoa Joe won, it wouldn't be bad. To be fair, though, I haven't always been really a big Samoa Joe fan. And I know people are going to get on me with that. It's just, I don't know. I never liked him since when he came in the company on Raw or whatever and like hurt Seth Rollins' leg for Triple H, that whole uh, storyline or whatever. So I never really liked him since then, but you know, he is a really good heel. I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna go against him on that. Like he is so damn good. And um, it, it was a damn good match, you know. And I, like I said, I'm so damn surprised they actually let Kofi win with one Trouble in Paradise. Honestly, like that is very surprising to me. But uh, let's get on to the next one because <laughs> y'all know how much I can just go on. Anyway, Extreme Rules winner takes all mixed tag team match for the Universal and Raw Women's Championship. Dude, that match was a banger and I'm surprised because it had Baron Corbin and Lacey Evans on the other side. Honestly, like I always tell everybody though, the reason why I kind of didn't dig this whole storyline was because, like, every time there's a new couple in WWE, WWE tries to, like, shove it down their, shove it down everybody's throats and do this same stuff over and over again. Like, you wonder why Seth and Becky didn't <laughs> show everybody their relationship for a while because this is what happens, you know? WWE just does this crap every time. So, I kind of understand why. Uh, but yeah, um, the match was dope. The tables, like how Becky and Seth put, uh, Lacey and Corbin through the tables at the same time. That was freaking lit. I love that spot in the match. There was so much stuff in that match that just had me going crazy. And, uh, I'm very proud that that was actually a good match. Because I didn't think it was going to be really good. I'm going to be honest. That wasn't the one that I thought that would steal the show. I thought the steal shower would be Ricochet versus AJ. And honestly, I think the Ricochet versus AJ was probably better than the the main event. But hey, that's just me. Um, but I did love the match. And that says something, because usually I don't really care for Corbin and Lacey's matches. I'm going to be honest. Corbin's really good as a heel, but let's be honest, dude. Their gimmick for him right now is just terrible. Lacey Evans is good at wrestling and stuff, but right now it's just stupid. So, like, I didn't expect it. But it was a damn good match, and then at the end I'm thinking, oh, well, they finally got it. And then, boom, Corbin hit freaking Lacey Evans with a damn it. Or, uh, Becky Lynch with a damn it. end of days, bro. He hit Becky Lynch with an end of days. Y'all don't know how hard I popped for that. I popped so hard for that. That was, 
Look, dude. That was dope, okay? She's the man. She was able to take it. And she she took a damn end of days. Which set it up perfectly for Bro Brock to come in. And um, cash in the money in the bank. And take Seth's title. I mean, it sucks, to be honest, that Seth ain't got his title anymore. But, like... It could not have been more perfect, you know. Baron got Becky out of the way perfectly. Brock came in, cashed in, got the title. It is what it is. It had to happen eventually. I mean, he had the money in the bank contract. It was going to happen. So, I'm kind of glad how it happened. It was actually a pretty cool way it happened. I know there were some people that was really pissed off. I honestly liked it, I'm going to be honest. I don't like how he never, like... Defense the championship, but like the way he won it was pretty dope, and I hope that it changes now. Hopefully, he starts defending it. Hopefully, it's better this time. You never know. Uh, but did y'all enjoy Extreme Rules? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think about the end of days on Becky Lynch. And um, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button for your boy. Subscribe to the channel if you're new because we're on the road to 300 subscribers, baby. And I need every one of you there. And hit that notification bell where you always know when I'm live or put up a video because they're always too sweet. Anyways, guys, stay tuned. And until next time, you already know. Peace out.